Oh, it's too bright out here. Hey guys, Bullhorn Betty. We are in front of Brian Kohlberger's home. As you see behind me, all the yellow tape, the crime scene tape that was here yesterday has been removed. We were actually watching them uh, go into that second floor door. Let me get over here on the sidewalk and show you a little bit better. But it is that second floor door up over here. That is the one that uh, they were in yesterday doing forensic um, testing uh, inside there. He uh, has been uh, or has uh, charges of first degree murder, four counts, uh, one for Zana Kernodal, one for uh, Maddie Mogan, one for Ethan Chapin, and one for Kaylee Gonzalez. As many of you know, Maddie and, and Kaylee uh, had their celebration of life uh, yesterday afternoon at Lake City Church. We were honored to be invited by the Gonzalez family to that celebration of life. Um, it was very beautiful. And to know that just in the early morning hours before that celebration of life, we learn the identity of who law enforcement believes is responsible for the quadruple homicide that claimed four young um, college age students life. They were murdered in their off campus housing just steps away uh, from the University of Idaho. Many people had a lot of questions when this first broke where all four of these students were found deceased in their home. Lots of questions arose from the 911 call of the unconscious person to whether the roommates heard anything. Um, you know, we heard of a stalker early on and it appears that stalking um, allegation may have been fairly accurate because as we're learning about this gentleman, it appears that he was following um, Maddie Mogan and Kaylee Gonzalez. I have not corroborated that, but that is what we are learning and hearing in and around um, this whole area of Wazoo. This is devastating uh, to this community uh, and to the University of Idaho community. Um, this has rocked two universities that are so tightly knit, uh, just only eight miles apart from each other. It's just something that I can't describe. Um, we are happy and thankful that justice is being served uh, for the four victims uh, here, but this is such a shame. This should never have happened. And now that we're looking back, we're wondering why did it happen? What made him do this? Uh, we're hearing about a poll he did to engage the criminal mind, to get behind uh, why they did something, how it made them feel. This is all really creepy. And that poll went out over 200 days ago. So was this a plan of his? Did he want to commit this act? Was that the reason why he was in the criminology program to begin with? We learned that his family is a very, very nice family. So what made this man, Brian Koberger, do the unthinkable to these beautiful souls for no apparent reason? We haven't found out any information from law enforcement. We're not gonna be able to have access to the probable cause affidavit until uh, Brian is brought back here to Idaho. So we're following this case. We're going to be out here hitting the pavement and we're gonna be finding out as much as we can about Brian Koberger. We did have uh, and speak, spoke to uh, somebody he knew about nine years ago. The guy hasn't spoke to him since. And you guys will want to hear that interview, very telling about his demeanor, about his uh, personality traits and things of that uh, nature from somebody that knew him before he, was, he, he started going vegan, before he lost all the weight. Um, so you guys want to hear this interview and you will not get it anywhere else but on the Bullhorn Betty channel and Chronicles of Olivia channel. So please don't forget to sub up. God bless each and every one of you.